Okay guys, we had such a great time at WorkbenchCon and learned so much that we're going to try to put some of that knowledge to the test and try making a project out of something called wood. There were a lot of people there that made stuff out of wood. They called themselves woodworkers and we're going to try that today. Just heard about it. Orange store. There's people in orange. I guess they sell that wood stuff. Let's see what they got. So they call these premium studs. Finally, something I can relate to. I guess I need some of this. So we got some of this wooden flat bar here and they say this is two by four, but I'm measuring 1.525, huh? I guess it's wrong. So the wooden flat bar I got is way out of spec. It's off by 4,700 thousandths. Um, that's a lot. It's supposed to be two by four, but it's, it's nowhere near there. Uh, so I don't know how we're gonna work with that. Um, hmm. So we're gonna build a workbench like this. We're gonna put this, uh, we're gonna make this out of uh, wooden square bar and then we're gonna put some flat stock on top here. And uh, it should be a nice little workbench. So we're gonna get this all marked out. Usually we use uh, one of these fine point markers, but in this industry you're supposed to use one of these. This is called a pencil. And these are, these are pretty old, but I guess they work better on wood. So we're gonna do something like that and uh, get a nice spec there. So I guess I'm supposed to get something called a framing square. I just have this super precise one made by Sterrett. We'll just try to do that. It's from, you know, a while back and it's a good machinist tool. That should work. So I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to cut this, but we're gonna start by trying it with a cold chisel. No, that, that doesn't really work. It's pretty slow. So we're gonna try cutting this with an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel now. We got it in our post vise, and let's just see what this does. So we got a pretty nice cut here. It it really smells a lot and it makes a lot of smoke. That might not be the right type of cutting wheel for doing wood. Um, we'll try it on the chop saw. We had to turn a fan on this. This wood stuff makes a ton of smoke. It's, it's pretty potent. Okay, so we're gonna try it on the chop saw. This might work a little better. So that's a little better of a cut. Um, I'm still not sure that's the right abrasive for cutting through wood, but it does okay. So we got this piece of sheet wood here. It's a flat stock piece and it's not very precise. It's not ground, it's just a, a mill finish and we're gonna use this for the top. Okay, so now that we got this all fixtured up, we're gonna try welding it together with the MIG welder here. Well, that, that didn't really work. Uh, I might have the wrong gas. We're using argon CO2. We'll try changing some settings. Okay, so since the welding didn't work, we're gonna try rivets. We're gonna just rivet this thing together. Uh, these aren't quite the right length rivet, but we're gonna do some clever stuff with them. So first, we're just gonna punch and drift our holes here. You can do that totally cold. You don't even need to heat it up for this. This is a real nice material to work with. We just were able to punch all these holes without even having to heat it up. You can do all this cold. So it's pretty good. You just gotta have a good geometry punch. Okay, so now we just need to rivet these two together and we're gonna just use a riveting hammer and just sort of That's goes in pretty easy. Okay, so we got the table all riveted together and it looks pretty good, it's pretty solid. Now we're gonna do some of these fine woodworking techniques I learned about to really make this more rustic and decorative. Oh, it's gonna be cool. Okay, so before we go pouring our epoxy, we need to use this Craig fixture here to make sure that this isn't at the one angle that this thing sets for. 
I'm not sure what that angle is, but luckily this isn't that. So that's what this does. Okay guys, so a man with four eyes told me that if I melt crayons onto it, everyone's gonna love it. So let's melt some crayons. We're just using a little oxyacetylene torch here to melt these crayons. That should be good. Man, that does look pretty good. Guy with the four eyes definitely was right. If you melt cranes on a table, people think it's really cool. It looks good. Okay guys, so now we're gonna do an epoxy pour. Apparently this is like the ASMR of the woodworking community. So I'm gonna speak real quietly. Okay, so from what I understand, it's important to mix the epoxy in one of these large cups and then do a big dramatic pour where you go side to side a whole bunch so that you see all the stuff. We're gonna do that. So we're gonna just use some of this uh, Harambe glue. Harambe is our local gorilla. And we're gonna just do a resin pour here. Gonna get this all squeezed out here. Big dramatic resin pour. So now we're just going to do a time lapse of the resin setting up. So we're going to show you all the stages that it goes through. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so for our finished photography, we want to use natural light and a nice cool object. So we put some, some of our metal roses on this beautiful table and it really ties the room together. Okay guys, so now that we've got our table, we're gonna put it alongside this body of moving water that really inspired it. This one's a creek, but you can be inspired by a river or a waterfall as well. We're now gonna join the table with the flowing body of water that inspired it.